Okay, so in these uh, last couple videos, I'm just going to show you some techniques for actually making uh, surface bodies in T-splines or sculpt mode. And I'll just use a couple examples. One of the other things I'm going to do here is show how you can use either concept drawings or, um, you know, it could be a photograph, like in the case of what I'm showing, but it could definitely be a sketch that you did on paper and scanned in. And we'll see how to kind of model to a drawing that you've made. So let's start it by uh, just going to create form and uh, within here or before we got in here we can insert a canvas and that'll be kind of our reference for the thing that we want to make. So um, I'm going to choose this teether. And then I just choose which face I want it to end up on and hit OK. And then the first thing I'm going to do is um, calibrate it. So I need to make sure it's actually the right size because right now I kind of have no idea what size it is. So I will hit uh, calibrate and then I'll just uh, get to orient it so that I'm looking straight at it. And uh, let me just choose some distance from here to here maybe and say that's 100 millimeters. We can hit the F6 key to zoom everything into the size of the screen. And at this point, I could start modeling uh, to this shape. Now, this kind of looks like it's one thickness and it's kind of got rounded edges. This is something I might be able to do in the solid modeling, modeling workspace, but we'll see that this there's some benefits to doing this in, uh, in sculpt mode using surfaces. So the way I'm going to do this is very different than what I did before, which is a combination of sketching and extruding. I also could have started with a cylinder or any kind of uh, shape that seems to roughly match the thing I'm making. In this case, I'm going to actually use faces. So I'm going to create individual T-splines faces and go from there. So this is a totally different technique than uh, any of those others that I described. I'll choose the plane that I want to work on. And what I'm going to do is essentially just start making faces. And the main thing to realize is as I do this, I just want to, again, have the minimal num the minimum number of faces required to kind of get all the information that I need in here. I don't want to have extra faces to uh, make it more difficult to have the kinds of curves that I want and have them be smooth. So in this case, you know, I'm trying to just um, add more faces where there's more uh, change in shape happening. And otherwise, I just want to sort of catch like the the edges where I or the, the points where I think there's going to be uh, a shift in the curve. So I'm the other thing that I'm trying to do is keep everything at sort of a um, you know in in quads. So I'm not trying to make triangles. I just want um, things that look like uh, rectangles essentially. Okay, and um, you know, I, I still am not too worried about these uh, parts over here. I'll see how that works out. Uh, with more work, I could get this really close. Uh, maybe I'll just tweak this one last thing here. Uh, try and get this to move up and maybe even rotate. That's the first time I'm doing that. So um, let's see. I think that's, that's uh, well, this definitely needs to move. Uh, Yeah, we're fine. So I'll hit OK. And uh, at this point, I can go ahead and actually extrude this. So let me go to Create, Extrude, choose all of these faces. So I'll highlight everything. And I'll just have it come out 5 millimeters. Now what happens is, I'll hide the canvas so we can see it better. Uh, it's, it's essentially... Um, just extruded it in one direction and the other direction it's still kind of just an open thing. So this sort of looks like kind of if it were made out of plastic it's sort of half of the molded plastic thing. And one thing you can see is that it rounded those curves off. Remember those things were sharp? Let me turn the canvas back on and see if it got any closer to what it should be. Well it it's closer but I can still go back to edit form and that's why I wasn't too worried about it before. I, I figured I'll, I'll kind of touch it up once I um, have an actual um, kind of three-dimensional thing. 
again, I'm not going to go too far here, but you know, I think there's some rotation of things that would that would help. In this case, I'm mostly just moving things. I'll um, now I'll take a look again. I've got again just one side. I'll hide the canvas to see it better. What I want to do now, I think, is uh, if I turn on the origin, I can see that that work plane right there is actually right at the uh, point because I drew my um, I I kind of drew those original faces on this work plane. It's right in the point where I'd want to flip this over and mirror it. So I'll show you here if I go to sy symmetry. Uh, we'll talk about internal mirroring later, but right now I literally want to do duplicate this T-spline body and the mirror plane is going to be that work plane. When I hit OK, you can see it's going to weld them together and what I've got is a single T-spline's uh, surface body. Now, so, you know, I think there were some benefits maybe to doing this this way rather than uh, trying to make a sketch of this and, and extruding it and then adding some fillets. We get much more interesting curves here than if we just filleted, it, I think. And another thing that we have the possibility of doing is right now we have symmetry. So uh, that's what that green line going down the middle is because we um, used symmetry to mirror it. Well, what if I take a couple of these faces and pull them out? Uh, I can start to get a more three-dimensional form instead of just uh, something that's that looks extruded. So um, there's there's more possibilities because we're doing this in T-splines or in sculpt mode. So I'll hit finish form and of course it was able to translate that into a body because there was nothing weird happening there and now I could do whatever I want. Maybe I want to add a uh, hole over here for um, for a lanyard or something, right? So I think probably a pretty small hole, five millimeters. Uh, now, one thing is that it's, um, no, that's fine. That seems like it's okay. I'll hit okay. I probably didn't want that to be threaded. So let me double click and un undo that part. Uh, hit okay. And I've got a hole going through it. Now I could do things like a fillet. And so I'm doing a combination of surface modeling and uh, things that I would do normally in the solid modeling workspace. So let me just actually choose both of those circles, add a fillet, and uh, there we go.